Hey guys, and welcome back to this installment of building the Quaker Town in Southern. Um, apologies for no video last week. I decided to take the week off from video production, so um, that's why you're kind of seeing maybe some of this footage is actually a little old because some changes to the route have occurred since this footage was taken. So I do apologize for that. However, sometimes life just happens, so I ask that you just kind of keep that in mind. What you see me doing here is I'm trying to get some houses that somewhat work in the Quaker Town area. Um, Train Simulator doesn't really have, oh, here's the perfect house for this area, and you kind of have to fudge it a little bit. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to find some buildings that have kind of sort of the correct spacing and are kind of maybe the right size or at least close to it. And... And the like and you see me here I'm trying out a couple different options a um, couple different locations and again with train simulator sometimes you just have to get it close because even if you can fudge some buildings together it doesn't always look right it doesn't always turn out right and it's just a limitation of the game and with me trying to not use really any custom assets not that I even really know how to make them um, that kind of limits our options here, so I'm just trying to get something this close. But we are kind of working in the Quaker Town area this time. We are going to be mainly focusing on the Quaker Town area this time. However, um, towards the end, we're actually going to move back down to the Lansdale area and actually the extreme end of the line. Um, the kind of somewhat tailed off model portion that is the SEPTA line going south towards Philadelphia. Um, I do have one station past Lansdale there, and I also have another one going off to, towards Doralstown, but, um, again, the SEPTA line is not really the focus of the railroad, so trying to, going, going past what is necessary isn't really ideal. And again, you just see me trying to find some buildings here, maybe there are some other options from various various resources um, additionally um, the story of this railroad somewhat changed slightly um, the E8 was swapped out for an FL9 um, I am basing this off of an idea I have in my head and in a document I've been writing up but and so some things are changing to that effect initially in that idea an e8 was involved but now it's an fl9 and again i sorry i'm sorry for changing all of the requirements as frequently as i am but i'd rather err on the side of keeping you guys updated rather than not so much and you see me here placing some houses getting some houses that are close again you're not going to find the correct thing in train simulator more often than not you just gotta put up with sizing some things and dealing with it Again, you see me here trying to find something that's close, but Transmeter doesn't really have that many options for townhouses that I'm noticing, and the ones they do don't really have angled roofs. So it's like just kind of between a rock and a hard place trying to find one that fits and trying different different variables until it works and rotating it until it works. Um, so eventually I settle on this house and get it sized up vaguely to the correct size and put it in place and and the like um, again just trying to get it close you see we now have some street lights in Quaker Town and moving on we're actually moving over to a store part of Quaker Town I had most of the stores involved already there but I neglected a certain area just to the just kinda to the e to the west of the station that I hadn't put any stores in yet and I wanted to get something in there, and this is the footage of that. I love these kind of buildings. They're, they're buildings I found um, initially in the um, Chicago Racetrack assets. And then I discovered they were also in um, some of the other assets I was using, such as new, the Hanover Sub, as well as the um, Springfield, Springfield Line. And they're great, like, one to three-story storefronts that are great for kind of more 
maybe not super urban but kind of urban environments i mean quaker town's not a city by any means it is certainly a suburb and a smaller suburb of that than than most and you see me just getting some things lined up now again these aren't exact to the buildings that are there they're just as close approximations as i can get so that is to be kept in mind, but I do try and vary it and um, basically vary the storefront so it's not looking super samey, but is looking at least pretty decent. Um, you may have noticed also in some more some of the later updates of the route, I do put concrete foundations underneath all these buildings um, because obviously there's no lip between the curb and the building, so I wanted to make that change to get it somewhat realistic um here you see me building one of the municipal buildings you notice the salt shed off in the corner there kind of a maintenance area um the police station's off to kind of kind of down now to the bottom of the frame so i'm just trying to get some things sized right i know i'm going to have to kind of fudge this building a little bit um you see me grabbing some assets from nearby and just again trying to get it as close as i can um, using Google Maps, using Google Earth to do a street view and kind of figure out where some of the things are. I think with this particular building you'll see me kind of decrease the height of it suddenly and use another building to kind of fudge the angled part of the roof to make it look good and the like. Um, again, coming up, you, kind of this reason for that pause was me looking at the building in real life on Google Maps just to make sure it was the right height and adjusting it from there. And then kind of moving on, trying to look on for something else to work on. I kind of move over for a couple of areas of town, but then I eventually move back to the tried and true trees and bushes that we've already seen multiple times. So moving on, we now go down to the extreme southern end of the line. This is actually one of the steps of stations just past Lansdale. I believe the station name, and don't quote me on this, is, as I look it up in Google Maps here, super quick. I know I should really know this offhand, but I unfortunately don't. This station that we just saw is Pembroke, Pembroke Station. And you see I'm putting in these foundations um, in with the catenary. Unfortunately, the catenary doesn't match height-wise. Um, one, I had to use RW tools in order to get it to where it should be and the track where it should be in order to get the pantographs to line up and everything. But that results in these angled bits on the um, catenary being just floating out in the air like they don't have any support. So what I did is I took one of the AP station blocks and modified it and made it small enough. That way it kind of works as like this footing and it's not super realistic, it's not super accurate but it does work for what I need to use it for and it was a pretty quick and easy fix. And now we're moving back from Pembroke to Lansdale and just putting in one the main parking lot kind of next to the SEPTA stage, SEPTA um, multi-story car park. But this will round out the episode. I hope you guys had a great week. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe and see you next week.